Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're covering everything you need to know about the 4% rule and ultimately whether it's safe and worth using for two distinct age groups. Firstly, for those who are close to retiring, but secondly, also for young investors wishing to better understand how long they must remain in the workforce and whether with proper planning, they can actually retire early. But to properly understand how the 4% rule is relevant to young workers wishing to shorten their working career, first we must cover the basics. The 4% rule is a spending rule that is used and discussed widely within the personal finance space to determine how much you can safely withdraw from your portfolio during retirement without fear of running out of money. The 4% rule originated from a 1994 study led by Bill Bengen, who analyzed historical large cap stock and bond market data to determine safe withdrawal rates for retirees. In other words, he wanted to understand how much money we can sustainably take out from our portfolio each year in retirement. And he found that a 4% withdrawal rate adjusted for inflation would have sustained a retirement portfolio for at least 30 years, even accounting for very strong market downturns. The study looked at a wide combination of asset allocations, ranging from 100% stocks, 0% bonds, to 0% stocks, 100% bonds and also looked at different safe withdrawal rates. It then tested the success rate, in other words, not running out of money after 30 years, of each of these asset allocation strategies to different portfolio withdrawal rates for the 50 year period of 1926 to 1976. And here's a quick example to understand this very important table. If we started our retirement and decided on a 7% withdrawal rate on a 75-25 stocks to bonds portfolio, we should know that this specific choice had an 82% success rate across all the individual starting years that were tested in the 50 year data set. And notice in the table that the 4% withdrawal rate did exceptionally well across asset allocations ranging from 100% stocks all the way to 50% stocks, 50% bonds. And this is where the myth was born. For a 30 year period, you could expect to safely retire with a portfolio of 50% stocks, 50% bonds, and sustainably withdraw 4% each year, adjusted for inflation, without too much fear of running out of money. Of course, looking at the table, the 3% withdrawal rate performed even better. However, using a lower withdrawal rate essentially means having to work many more years to reach a much larger portfolio before being able to retire. Let's consider the following example. Using the 3% withdrawal rate to sustain $50,000 in retirement, you would need 1.67 million invested instead of only 1.25 million using the 4% rule. It will take several years longer to get there, so here there is an important trade-off to consider. We will address how you can actually overcome this trade-off towards the end of the video. But at this point, you may be wondering, why does anyone actually need a rule in the first place? Well, the most dangerous risks that retirees face is being exposed to the so-called sequence of return risk. If you happen to be unlucky and retire in a bad year, where you have two to three years in a row of poor market performance with negative returns, there is a significant risk that your portfolio may not be able to recover and to safely sustain your retirement. Remember that the 4% rule was originally thought of for workers exiting the workforce at the traditional retirement age of 60 to 65. These retirees were hopeful about potentially enjoying a 30 year retirement and wanted above all to ensure they didn't run out of money during this period. Before turning our attention to how the 4% rule affects young investors wishing to retire early, let's consider a quick example to understand how the 4% rule works in practice. Let's suppose you're 65 and ready to retire. You have $1 million invested in your portfolio, which is a combination of 75% stocks, hopefully invested in low cost index funds, and 25% bonds. As we saw from our table, based on historic data, there's a 98% chance of not running out of money. As assuming that you follow this rule blindly and don't adapt at all your spending to the market's performance. More on this later. Your withdrawals in this example would take place as follows. In year one, you would withdraw $40,000, which is 4% of $1 million. If inflation was 3% in year one, then in year two, you adjust for inflation and withdraw this time 41,200. If inflation during year two was 2%, then in year three, you would adjust again for inflation and withdraw $42,024. You get the idea, rinse and repeat for the following years of retirement. As I mentioned earlier, the 4% rule is not only relevant for retirees, but also for young investors. 
It can help us understand how much money we really need to either retire early or just to be financially independent. Why is this important? Well, firstly, because most people simply have no clue as to how much they actually need to sustain themselves in retirement or to be considered financially independent. And unfortunately, you can't manage what you can't measure. So setting financial goals early in your career can provide you with a lot of clarity. If you have a plan and are intentional with your savings, you may not actually need to work a 9 to 5 job for the next 40 years like previous generations did. If you need to sustain $40,000 worth of annual expenses, then the amount that you need to have saved up and invested is $1 million according to the 4% rule. This is sometimes referred to as your financial independence or FI number. In this table you can see different portfolio targets depending on different annual spending needs. It's now time to discuss some of the limitations of using the 4% rule. When should we be careful when applying this rule? In short, always. The very creator of the 4% rule suggests that this should be thought more as a rule of thumb, not a rule of nature. We should always remember the following four caveats and circumstances when considering using the 4% rule. Firstly, the 4% safe withdrawal rate may not apply directly to early retirees. Remember that the underlying study that we presented earlier is, was aimed at traditional retirees exiting the workforce at age 60 or 65, considering a 30-year retirement ahead of them. However, notice that nowadays more and more Gen Z and Millennials increasingly report not being on board with the traditional 40-year 9-to-5 career pathway that previous generations followed. Anyone wishing to retire early should view this rule with special care. Not only could their retirement be substantially longer than the 30-year time frame, but their life expectancy will also likely surpass that of previous generations. Secondly, the 4% rule calls for an aggressive asset allocation that not everybody can realistically stomach. Everybody's investing risk tolerance is different. Asset allocations of stocks and bonds ranging from 75-25 all the way to 50-50 are perceived as aggressive by many. Having a large share of your wealth in a volatile asset class such as stocks calls for a perfect behavior from the investor. The investor must be very disciplined and avoid selling when markets will eventually fluctuate. Thirdly, we should remember that the original study of the 4% rule used US data only. So this may be another reason to consider of why it may not apply to everyone's situation. And finally, the original study ignored taxes and fees, but you certainly shouldn't. Taxes and fees should be considered within your annual expenses when applying the 4% rule. In spite of the caveats, and although I don't advocate following the 4% rule blindly, I do think it's an excellent starting point for young investors, and it can also be a very important tool for retirees that are willing to be a little bit flexible. When you're young and starting out, it can serve as a compass and provide you with a ballpark number of how much money you really need to have invested to approach financial independence. At the beginning of your investing journey, this information is more than enough to motivate you and to get you started with investing. How can we build on and improve the 4% rule? With one word, flexibility. It's okay to follow the 4% rule, but it's even better to pay attention at the same time to what the market is doing and to adapt your spending accordingly. You certainly don't have to do this on a one-to-one -one ratio. For example, if the market is going down 20%, that doesn't mean that you have to reduce your annual spending by 20% or vice versa but you do need a buffer in both directions. Even better than rigid rules would be to consider variable spending strategies, which if you're interested, I will cover in a future video. If you're young and starting out your investing journey, some of the numbers that I presented in this video may seem daunting. If so, I think you would appreciate our video on the critical importance of reaching your first 100K. Be sure as well to check out my thank you note in the comments below. Take care and see you in the next one.